Hello and welcome to another Find tutorial. In this installment we're going to be building on the concept of the user interface and looking at how we can update content that's already displayed. So we're going to start from the hello world code from a previous tutorial and work from there. To begin this tutorial I've copied the files from the previous hello world. You can see here we have the module definition and the sum file along with main.go so if we open our files in Visual Studio Code again, you'll see the code as it was in our Hello World tutorial previously. This time we're going to want to make something a bit more dynamic. So let's make a clock that displays in a similar window. So we will change the title of our window to clock. And we're going to want to update this label here. So instead of saying Hello World, it displays the time. Now the key part about updating content is to be able to reference it using a variable name. So instead of passing it anonymously into set content, we want to extract it from here and set up a new variable. So we will call this clock and we will simply pass the label in and then we pass the variable into set content. Now this would execute exactly like it did before, but we want to do something a little bit more. And so instead of setting static text here, we'll create a new function that is able to update the time. We'll call this update time and we'll pass in a clock widget. And so we need to create this new function, update time, and the item that we're passing in is going to be our widget.label. And inside this function, we're going to want to make sure that it's displaying the correct time. To use this, we'll get the formatted time using the time package. So we can get the formatted time using time.now and then the format function. And let's just save that so it imports the time package and we can get some hints. And the format takes format string and to display hours, minutes, seconds we use the helper of three for the hours, four for the minutes and five for the seconds. And because this is a format string we could add more things like the time is. And so we have a formatted time string and to update the display we just call set text on the label. And so here now, we have that being set onto the widget, and we could run this application, and it would display the time in our widget, but only once. So we should also set a ticker to do this on a regular basis. Now, the run or show and run, as mentioned before, is going to stay executing until the application quits. So to be able to update content, we need to execute a go routine, something that's going to run in the background. And so we can set up a new anonymous go routine using gofunk like this. And inside that we should tick so that it happens on a regular basis. Now to do that we can use for range and then time dot tick. And we pass that a duration for how long there should be between ticks. So we will use time.second so that it updates each second. And then inside this is what will happen each time it ticks. And so we can say update time and pass it the clock label that we created. So now you can see we're setting the content to this empty label which has had its content set to the current time and then each second we tick to update the time. We've not had to worry about how this is happening behind the scenes. All we do is make sure that this is going to run on a background go routine so that our application can execute. If we go back to our terminal, then we can go run this application. And we see this new window is now loaded and it is showing us the current time. That's all there is to updating content. Hopefully we'll see you at another tutorial.